Okay, this is a redo video. I, I made this quite a few times and there were some complaints that the, the video didn't turn out well and you couldn't see the you couldn't see the top, so I'm gonna redo it. Uh, and I'm not positive exactly what everything was on there, but I'm gonna just make up my own stuff. It was about friction. So friction is is a complicated thing, but we can actually model it pretty easily. Um, so let's look at an example. Suppose I have a block. Let's say this is um, a one kilogram block, just to be, just to make it easy, and <clears throat> it's just sitting there. Well, if it's sitting there at rest, then the acceleration has to be zero, so that I have these two forces, mg, the the weight pulling down, and then I have the I'll call it the normal force, the surface pushing up, and those two forces have to be equal, such that the net force is zero and it stays there. Okay. Now, what if I push on this with my finger, one newton? So F equals one newton x hat. I'm pushing that way. But it stays there, it doesn't move. So I have a block and I'm just pushing there and it doesn't move. Well, that says that the net force has to still be zero and how does that work? Well, then I'm gonna have to have, there has to be a frictional force. I'll call it F friction and it would have to be negative one newton x hat. You'd have to be pushing back so that the net force in the x direction is zero. Now, what if I change that and I push a little bit harder? So I push with two newtons. If I push with two newtons and it still doesn't move, then that means that the frictional force has to be, has to get larger too. It had to come up to two newtons. So that's one of the things about static friction. In static friction is the case where the two surfaces are interacting and they're not sliding. It turns out that the static friction force does whatever it needs to do to make the thing not move up to a point. If I push this with 80 newtons, this is probably going to start sliding. Okay, so <clears throat> the static friction force, the model for the magnitude of the static friction force, I call it F sub F, it's going to be less than or equal to some coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So the harder these two things are pushed together, the greater the frictional force could possibly be. It could be smaller. The, the mistake to make is to say, oh, it's equal. <clears throat> if I put that up here, I could get some force, let's say 10 newtons, and I only push with two newtons. If I have a 10 newton friction force and a two newton pushing force, then it's gonna accelerate this way. And that would just be really weird to push on a block and have it accelerate back the other way because of friction. It doesn't do that. Okay. So this is our model for friction. Um, once things start to slide, once they start to slide, it turns out the model for friction says this is static. Once it starts to slide, the friction force becomes equal to some other coefficient times the normal force, and this we call kinetic friction. Now the interesting thing here is that does it depend on the surface area in between these two? This model says no. Okay, so this model doesn't work for every single case. There are some cases where it does depend on surface area, but this model says no. Does this model right here say the faster you go, the more friction there is? Not according to this model. This says it's just, it just depends on how hard they're pushing together. Okay, so this is just a model that works in a lot of cases, but not every case. This is the one you'll see in introductory physics because you can, you can uh, work with it, okay? But it's, friction's a complicated thing in reality. Um, and this is just a simple model for it. Okay, <clears throat> let me, let me uh, look at an example calculating the coefficient of friction. Let's say I had an experimental method where I took a, a plane and I kept on raising up the uh, angle and had a block on there until I got to the angle when it just started to slide. Okay, so it's at that point where it's just, if I, it's just at the verge of sliding. If I tilt it up a little bit more, it's going to slide. Okay. Um, so what, if it's at that point where it's the maximum static friction force possible, what would the free body diagram look like? Well, I have the gravitational force, mg, um, now, what, uh, when you're drawing a free body diagram, think about what's touching the object. 
and what long range forces are on the object. The only long range force I have here is gravity. What's touching the, the object? For the block, it's just this plane. A plane can exert two forces. It can push on it this way, just like this one did, it pushed up. We call that the normal force. And, and here normal means perpendicular, that's perpendicular to the plane. And then it can also exert a frictional force parallel to the plane. In this case, the frictional force is going to be in whatever direction it needs such that the object doesn't slide. So in this case, the frictional force would be this way. Okay. I mean, if I was pushing really hard this way, the frictional force would, would change directions. Because it would say, I don't want it to slide. It doesn't really say anything. Okay. It, but it, it always opposes the uh, desired change. It wants the frictional force uh, is such that it tries to make the thing not move. And again, I'm saying that it's like it's a person, and it's not. Okay, so there's my free body diagram. These two forces are from the plane, and that's from gravity. Let's go ahead and, and but it's at, it's at in the equilibrium. I'm going to call that the x direction and the y direction. Why would I do that? Well, there's two reasons to choose an axis. One, this way, I only have one vector that's not, one force that's not in either the x or the y direction. So I only have to find one component. If this block were accelerating down the plane, this would be a good choice too. Because then I'd have the acceleration in either the x or y direction. That's really important. It makes things a lot easier. You, you don't have to do it, but it makes it easier. Okay, so in this case, the acceleration in both the x and the y direction is zero. Um, you can do a little geometry and see this is the complement of theta. So this is the complement of the complement of theta. That's also theta. So I'm going to have the components, let me just draw the components of the weight. I have that as the y component and that is the x component. So in the x direction I can say f net x equals zero because the acceleration is zero. So I have negative the friction force and then I have part of weight. So here's my triangle. I want the opposite side of that triangle. So if this is the hypotenuse mg the opposite side is going to be plus mg sine theta. Can, uh, I messed up last time with, okay, you can see that. I want to make sure I didn't get it out of the range. Okay, so now I have one equation right there. Um, let me go ahead and say I'm at the point with the greatest frictional force. So instead of that, I can say the frictional force equals mu s times n, so I get 0 equals negative mu s, the static coefficient of friction, times n plus mg sine theta. And let's say I experimentally determined what that theta was. Okay. Um, and I want to find mu. Well, I, I can't right now because I don't know n. Even if I knew m and theta, I don't know n. So let's go to the y direction f net y is also equal to zero. So I have n going in the positive y direction and then I have part of the gravitational force, this side right here. So it's going to be the cosine of the angle times mg. So this is going to be the normal force minus mg cosine theta. Now it, I, I think I like this example for two reasons. Well let me, let me go ahead and solve for n n equals mg cosine theta. Uh, reason number one is <clears throat> all too often people say, oh, x direction, cosine, y direction, sine. And that's not true. Look, here's the y component using the cosine. You have to look at the triangle to figure that out. Don't just fall in the trap of saying x is cosine. It's not good. The other thing I like is here, n equals mg cosine theta. The other trap is to say n equals mg. That is true sometimes, but that's not always true. You have to figure it out. Okay. But now let me put this in up here. 
this I can move uh, add mu s n to both sides I get mu s n equals mg sine theta and then putting in for uh, n I get mu s mg cosine theta equals mg sine theta the mg is on both sides I can divide both sides by cosine theta and I get mu s equals sine theta over cosine theta which is tangent theta so if I just measure that angle theta I don't even know, need to know what the mass is I can get the coefficient of static friction okay let me check the time well, that's that's 10 minutes I have some other frictional examples and I'm pretty sure this is what I did before but I think I think I'll just stop right there um, that's a pretty straightforward problem and you can make it more complicated if you want